In this, our third introductory video on pressures, forces, moments on a submerged horizontally symmetric plate, we want to show you that in addition to being able to use the integral formula to calculate the force on the plate, there is a formula that you can use either to calculate or to check your work, namely for a submerged horizontally symmetric plate, the resultant force is rho g h c times A, where HC is the depth from the liquid surface to the centroid of this horizontally symmetric plate. And this is an easy formula to remember, and it's based on that actually, that this looks like rho GH, so this is the pressure, times A. And the point that we will show at the end is that where we have this HC is actually the point where the pressure is average for the whole plate. So this is average pressure times area, which gives us force. But first we want to see what HC really looks like, and then the average part will become much clearer. So let's look at our problem from last time. We had this rectangular wall, and the top of the wall was at the liquid surface. The wall was W by L in dimensions, and we found that the resultant force was rho g, integral from zero to L, W, h dh. Now, in order to use this formula, we would need to know first where the centroid is and then find the depth from the liquid surface to the centroid. Well, the centroid is the place where if you were to cut this out of cardboard and put it on the top of your finger, it's the point where the cardboard would balance on your finger without falling off. So for a rectangle, the centroid is right smack in the middle. So coming from the top of the surface to the centroid, this is HC. And we can see that HC equals L divided by two. Let's write that down. HC here equals L divided by two. Let's integrate and check our formula. So we would have rho times G. W is a constant, so we can take it out front. We're left with h dh. So what's the integral of h? It's h squared over two from zero to l, which would leave us rho g w l squared over two. We need l over two for the h, and we hope we're left with the area. So let's see, rho g l over two, and if we take L over two, we're left with W times L. This is the area, so rho G H C times A. Exactly what we wanted. So the integral works with the formula. Good. Let's look at another typical problem. This is stated the way I found it. Determine the force and center of pressure. And we were given this schematic. The important part here is that there's actually two views of this plate here. This is the edge view of the gate, and this is the front view of the gate. This is the water level. What are they telling you? Two things here. One, that it's water, and two, that this is the level, and that the gate is six meters down before it starts. And another thing is that this L here is not this length here, it's this height here. So my point is, be very careful to decipher your problem before you start working on it. Okay, well, it's kind of difficult to see how to do either the integral or the formula with this tiny picture. So let's make a little bit bigger picture here. So let's draw a bigger triangle and then put some water above it. And then we have L coming down like this. We have W across the bottom here. And that gives us the setup so far that we have. We have rho, because we know it's water here. We have g. We need to integrate over a. a is triangular gate. We need h. Where do we measure h from? h is always measured from the liquid surface. So h is coming down from up here. This is h all the way from the liquid surface down. And then we need da which, because we have a horizontally symmetric plate, is a little strip, remember, across. And we're going to integrate on that strip 
over this plate, so from the top of the plate to the bottom of the plate. Now we can see that there are several difficulties with respect to this easy problem that we had with the rectangular wall at the surface of the water. Number one is that we've gone down D. We want to integrate over the plate, and so we don't really like H. We really would like a variable that starts at the top of the plate. So we want a variable that starts at the top of the plate here. And following the notation of box, we're going to call this variable eta. So we measure eta from the top of our plate to our little strip. Now, can we define H in terms of eta? And of course, we see that D plus eta is H. So our first formula for this integral is h equals d plus eta. Now with this new variable eta, we've also solved the problem of finding the height of dA, which is now just d eta. And now we're to the harder part, which is the width of this strip. The width over here was constant because this is rectangular, but the width here is zero at the top, and w at the bottom, and we can see that it depends on eta. So how do we write that down? We'll write that as width is w eta. Now for sure we don't want another variable, so we have to find a way to describe w eta in terms of eta and things we know like d, l, n, w. Can we do that? And the answer is triangles, similar triangles. So if I look at this triangle here, it's similar to this triangle here. Now I want a formula for w eta, so I'm going to start by writing w eta and then w eta. w eta is to eta, so that means divide by eta. And what goes with w eta? w, w is on the top here, is to l. Check, width's on the top, height's on the bottom. Good, solve w eta is equal to eta times w over l. Eta times w over l. And this is our second formula for using the integral. So let's put that together. So we have our resultant force, fr, is equal to rho g, rho times g, integral. Our variable of integration is eta. Let's put that in, d eta. Now let's look for our limits. Eta goes from zero to L, so from zero to L. Now we need H. H is D plus eta, so D plus eta, in parentheses, times DA. DA is D eta times W eta. We already have D eta, so we just need W eta. So that's eta times W over L. So this is what we would substitute our numbers into and integrate. It's a straightforward integral. On the other hand, we can either calculate or check our integral with this formula. Where is the centroid of this triangle? The centroid, because it's a horizontally symmetric shape, is always on the axis of symmetry, so it's on this vertical here. And for a triangle, it's two-thirds of the way to the base. So in the middle, two-thirds of the way to the base. That's the centroid. That's if we had the shape cut out of cardboard and put it up in the air and put our finger at that point, the triangle would balance itself. It's the center of mass. So what is HC? It's this distance from the surface to there. So it's this distance here. What is that? It's D plus two-thirds of L. So HC is equal to D plus two-thirds of L. So this is the relationship we need for this formula. Now the reason I wanted to solve this problem is that you have to be very careful whether the triangle is base down or base up. Both here when calculating W eta and here when calculating the centroid because then the centroid is at the top third when it's upside down. So you have to draw your shapes and know your centroids. Anyway, 
using this formula with this, we get this value for FR for the resultant force, rho G, D plus two-thirds L, times A. Uh, what is the area? The area is equal to W times L over 2. W times L over 2. So we could calculate it using the integral, or we could calculate it using this formula, or we could calculate both ways to check our answer. Of course, both should give the same result, and you can integrate this and check that it does indeed give the same result. So finally, a little intuitive discussion about how rho GHC is the average pressure on A. So the average pressure times A would give me the resultant force. By definition, C is the center of mass, and intuitively it follows that the average pressure is at the centroid. If I look over here, the average pressure, there's less area here and more area here, and so the average pressure point is at the centroid. The centroid is the point on A of average pressure. So that makes HC, the depth of the average pressure. So HC is the depth of the average pressure, and that makes exactly what we said. Rho GHC is the average pressure on A. Multiplied by A, we get the resultant force. That's that. Now let's solve a couple of problems with the resultant force, and then we'll go on to working on the center of pressure.